Welcome to Winning Conversations. We're really glad you're here today. Today we have a sweet couple with us, Dylan and Abby Everidge. They're a wonderful asset to our youth ministry. They're leaders over there, and they have such a sweet story of getting together and how God has um, really knit their hearts together for ministry and for people. So let's jump right in. Well, welcome. How are you guys, Dylan and Abby? We're glad to have you. Doing good. Thanks for having us. We're so excited to be here. Now, how long have you known, Andy? How long have you known Dylan? Well, like, I feel like I've, I mean, Dylan life. played soccer with my little cousin. So I think maybe your whole life, yeah, but I knows. not in, I didn't really know him, know him. I mean, I knew your brother a little more mm -hmm. um, from like high school and stuff, yeah. but not until he's like come back. Have I really, really known him, known him? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And I just met Abby, like whenever they got married. So yeah, yeah which was 11 months and two weeks ago. Oh, cute. so we're so cute. close to our little, you know, one year anniversary. Super yeah. excited. How has the first year of marriage been? It's been, been good. really, really good, really fun, mm -hmm. and definitely more challenging than anticipated, but good nonetheless. Like, yeah, exactly. I think it's been like transitioning from being a bachelor to a husband is like a big transition, I mm -hmm. think. Like living by yourself to, and living with someone and like going on their habits and schedules it's been it's been interesting to see like it coming together but it's been like really fun because i mean yes. she's like my soulmate you know so it's been it's been it's been fun <laughs> yes it is fun it's it's like living with your best friend but then you know there's challenges you work through together and it's it's challenging and it's like okay, what are we, it's, but it's how you handle it, you know, like in the challenge mm -hmm. and in the hardship when it doesn't feel fun, it's how you kind of handle that together. And it's, that's when I'm most thankful for, you know, that I married Dylan. Cause it's like, okay, I'm glad I have you to go through this with. Cause it's, Aww. it would be, you know, <laughs> difficult if, you know, I wasn't with my best friend in that moment or someone that was, I was really compatible with. So it is good. Yes. <laughs> it's just challenging. But good, good, good. Yeah. yeah, that first that first year, is lots of transition. It's lots of transition, mm -hmm. lots of learning. We got married young too, so we we grew. We we became adults together. Yes. We went through college together. So yeah. there's I think a, that, a lot of learning. I think that is what it is. Is we're just still growing. We're still growing up, and we're doing exactly. it together. So it's just added an extra dynamic and a big one because we're you know one flesh now, and anything he goes through, I'm going through, and vice versa. So it's just added that extra dynamic of like, oh, I'm growing, but I'm not doing it by myself anymore, which is a blessing too, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a completely different experience. Completely different. Yeah. Too, like we were grown. Like mm -hmm. I feel like we've already lived lives and yeah. then we got together. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So. And there's a challenge in that too. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Lending two full lives together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Marriage is weird. It's different. Like yeah. it's, it's, crazy. it's really different. Yeah. I feel like so much more like there's a lot of responsibility on me mm -hmm. to care for another human, which I have never, yeah. I had before I was married, like I wasn't used to like having to keep up with somebody else's schedule or yeah. do those things. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or like take care of somebody except for my daughter and taking care of a nine year old is different than taking care of a 30 year old. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you, you're just having to learn how to do all these different things. And it's rewarding. It's absolutely rewarding, yeah. but it, mm -hmm. it takes some, some time to, yes. you know, ease into Definitely. it and get a schedule. Lots of, yes. lots of patience. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it is true. You get to see the very best of your best friend, but also like they're not so best moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's learning how to make that choice of love. Yeah. Even when like you're not very loving right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so exactly. It's good. But then you guys introduced a little puppy. Watson. I know. Little, little Watson. Little Watson. We love him. Little chocolate lab. He is crazy. He's yes. named after a Green Bay Packer, by the way. <laughs> Got to put that in there. Christian Watson, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to tag him. Yes. <laughs> have to get him to listen to this podcast. What made you want to get a puppy? Oh, I've always wanted one. Really? She's I needed no convincing for one at all. For years. No convincing. Even when she was in high it was school, just, she wanted one. I had a puppy shaped hole in my heart. And now it's fulfilled. Now it's fulfilled. Oh. Yes. And it was it was something where she was, you know, begging me for so long and it got to the point where I was like I had an idea in my head. I was like, Okay, I'm gonna get her one for our anniversary. But she was like puppy fever randomly Every one day. week. 
And so I was just like going on Craigslist, you know, and then just like scrolling down. I see <laughs> see Chocolate Labs in Fort Worth. Got it yeah. real quick, but it was it was a little anniversary present for her. How's that been? It's been again it's another been, transition, like, adding keep adding transition, but it's been so fun. Like I feel like we've had him for two weeks now, right? A little, yeah, maybe um, almost three. three weeks, yeah. But I feel like now I'm kind of starting to learn, like, mm-hmm. you know, his tendencies, and he's a little more predictable than that first week having him. But he's getting comfortable. We're getting more comfortable. Yeah, and he's gonna outgrow like his puppy phase. Yeah, soon, like so. the biting and peeing in the house. It's like you get frustrating in the moment, but then I realize like he's a little baby, like he's an actual baby, <laughs> right? And he just doesn't know. You're learning more patience. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes we are. But but getting up the first time in the middle of the night, that's when I realized, okay, this is gonna be some work. Because he got up like six times that first night. So that was yeah. that was interesting. It was it's a like lot. a little taste of parenthood this right there. The I, know, right? I was telling, I was telling yeah. uh, your husband Ryan, I was telling him, I was like, Man, I feel like a parent. He was like, Boy, get out of here. You don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> there there is a line that you can draw. I, I agree. It is like a pre parenting mm-hmm. yes. like caring for another living thing that is dependent yes. on your on care you. and yeah. your affection. But when you can put him in a crate and walk away, it's like a different line. You can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't do that, can't do that, that with a baby. With a child. <laughs> they call CPS. Yes. You no, should no, not do that with a child. No, no. Wow, yeah. Funny. So so it's funny, but it's good. It's good. It's a good training for It's just fun mm-hmm. to have something else that you can pour your heart into. Like just, a, I mean, as much as a puppy is part of a family, I mean, it becomes part of your family. Yeah. Yes. And so it's really fun. Um, we did want to hear kind of, I know people know that you serve in youth and are over there um, and they see you in service, uh, main mm-hmm. service sometimes, but I don't mm-hmm. know that people know your story and how y'all came together. Yeah. So mm-hmm. will you talked about how y'all met and. Yeah, that was like, yeah, Dylan is really good at telling the story. So I'll let him go. All right. So this is my side of the story. Okay. (laughs) I was working at Kroger in uh, 2017, 2018. And uh, it was my first like job and was in high school, just trying to get some money. And uh, I worked with this girl named Lily and that was Abby's friend. And uh, she never worked the night shift, but randomly one night she was just working the night shift and she uh, she was saying, hey, guys, my friend Abby is about to come in, and uh, I want you guys to meet her, and she's going to meet my boyfriend who worked with us too. And uh, and my buddy Jake was texting Abby at the time, and I was, like, helping him out, like, bro, you're going to talk to her. You're going to, you know, you're going <laughs> to go spit some game at her. And she walks in, and I'm like, she's pretty. So uh, move to the side, buddy. And oh, my gosh. I, Cause he was being all shy, and I was just like, you know, I'll, I'll I'll spit some game at her, and then uh, then is this how normal like this is normal people talk? Yeah. Like this is yes, like, yes. this is spit some, spit some game. game. The kids okay. nowadays say These riz. Kids nowadays. Riz. So that's what, what? They, riz her up. That's what they say nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard think, that yes. word in my life. Uh, Ryan says it. <laughs> Ryan says it, but Ryan <laughs> says it because um. Bryn. Bryn says it. Yes. Ryan says it because Bryn says it. I got it from Bryn. So we got it. I don't like it. Yes. It's it's so funny how language changes. We were at the grocery store the other day and the twins and one of them was pushing the cart and he looks up and I touched his head and he kind of looks up and he goes, brah. I was like, oh my God. No. You're seven. (laughs) What's going on? Anyway. Well. um, So you rizzed her up. Rizzed her up. (laughs) And. uh, Now they're never going to say that word ever again. Yeah. I'm going to insecure about it. Uh, <laughs> but no, then I just started just talking to her and, you know, just making jokes with her and kind of hit it off with her. Um, but she was meeting her friend's boyfriend. So I was kind of let him do that. And afterwards, um, I asked that kid for her Snapchat and her number. And I just started. Uh, what did you think, Abby? What did you I think I was him? ecstatic when I saw that Dylan Everidge added you as a friend. And I looked to my friend and I was like, is that the Dylan that was in there? Like the Dylan I just met she's like yeah and I was like oh my gosh that's so I'm so excited and like when I saw his name I still remember it's like a core memory for me I saw his name pop up and I just like my heart dropped because I thought he was so cute I was like I kept asking her like who is that he's so cute like who is he and then he added me and I was like yay oh my gosh maybe he didn't hate me (laughs) yeah but it was I don't know it was just something where I just looked at her and was like Cause I don't know, like my whole confidence in high school was just like down with like talking to girls. I know this is random, but it's just like 
just got a spurt of confidence just randomly talking to her. And obviously it was God ordained. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. that girl working that night, she was homeschooled. She always worked in the morning. So she just randomly worked that night. So it was just something that I think that, I don't know, maybe the Holy Spirit was working me. I just was like, oh, he's going to help me riz her up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, oh my but uh, no, I mean, we just, it just took off from there. You know, we started talking and, you know, I would, I would go on trips with my grandpa and I would FaceTime her. Who's your the grandpa whole time. again? Uh, doc- <laughs> Dr. Jerry Savelle is okay, my grandpa. Okay, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. That is my grandpa. Um, Jerry Ann is my mom. And, uh, but no, I, I would just FaceTime her the whole time and, uh, just kind of, you know, started dating July 15th of 2018. Okay. Same anniversary as my grandpa. Wow. So, um, then, uh, yeah, just kind of fell in love throughout that six months, my mm-hmm. senior year of high school. And yeah. that was, that was really fun. And then the journey began. When yes. did you know that you wanted to get married? That is a, <laughs> or was it something question. that you just, well, I mean, it was, it was, you know, going into college tech, I obviously loved her and I was in love with her, but it was something that I was still 19. Mm-hmm. So my marriage is not even on my head, but mm-hmm. I think it was when I first came here, I kind of knew like, man, I've been with this girl for three years and we're still together and we love each other and she loves the Lord and I love the Lord. And mm-hmm. it just, I don't know, our just personalities just mesh so well together. I think it was about the time in 2020 when I first came here, I kind of realized, oh, okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to marry this girl. So y'all were dating before you went to college. <laughs> yes. And yeah. And you went, where did you go to college? So I went, to- so backstory before that, um, when I was my second semester of senior, she went to YWAM Youth with a Mission. Mm-hmm. And that was something that, uh, that's when it kind of changed for me when, when it comes to following the Lord. Like I was, I didn't really like, obviously I grew up in a household of faith, Mm -hmm. but I didn't really care about it. Like I was just kind of like a teenage kid who just wanted to do my own thing. And, uh, before she left, cause I thought she's going to be about to be some good Christian girl (laughs) and, you know, she's going to change and, you know. Uh, you know, and I kind of told her, I was like, Hey, I don't want you to change. Like, I don't, it's so selfish to me to say that, but I don't want you to change. And she said, no, you're going to change. Watch. And, you know, she prayed for someone to come into my life and, you know, got in, got involved with a youth group and the Holy spirit just kind of started working on me. And I just, it just kind of clicked, you know, that moment where it just kind of clicks like that. It was just like, I was just in a youth service. My friend invited me to, and it just like clicked. And I just wanted to follow Jesus at that point. I wanted to worship him. I wanted to, you know, pray to him and talk to him and, you know, read the Bible and, you know, connect with him. Not had I before, like on a different level where, hey, I go to my grandpa's service and I see Christianity that way. No, you have to have an experience for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so y'all were dating while y'all were at separate schools. Yes. How was that? So I actually graduated or I was still, I think I was graduated when I met you. Yes. But, so mm-hmm. we had a lot of separation, our whole dating experience, because after six months, I went to YWAM and then he stayed and finished his senior year. And that six months was really what determined if I was, you know, going to marry him or not, mm-hmm. because I was, you know, I would tell God, like, OK, if we're together, like we can make it through this long distance. And I was in Africa, so I was like, I couldn't just go like visit him. Right. Um, but if we can make it through this, then. I'll, I want to be with him. Like, I want to yeah. know, like, is this my husband and are we going to make it through the six months of like long distance? Cause that's hard. Cause we were only together for six months. Mm-hmm. So a year of our relationship, half of it would have been separated. Um, but God used that time. Yeah. Like it was probably still one of the most significant seasons of our lives because mm-hmm. I grew so much individually and then Dylan grew so much individually and it was kind of unexpected. And I did pray for that. But I was just like, looking back in retrospect, it's like, like God really had a plan and Mm -hmm. you can see that so clearly now that it was like, we were so like, not far from God, but just not intimate and not like intentional. And then coming back together, we like, he came to like my YWAM graduation and like seeing him, I was like, you are a completely different person. And then I, in a good way. And then like, he was the one saying like, 
well, it's going to be different. Like, don't change. And then we both drastically changed. And exactly. it was, we were just, like so much more compatible yeah. and like both love the Lord and then had like similar morals and visions at that time. So God was kind of like, he totally helped like yeah. that come together and grow us individually. We really needed that time in order to come back and continue dating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So when you came back, you came back in 2020, right? Yes. And what were you doing when you came back here? So But you didn't you didn't did you graduate from tech and then you moved back? No, so I went uh you know my my senior year um I mean my dad's really big on education. So I mean I'm doing SAT, applying to colleges. I applied to like Texas, UNT, Texas Tech and all A&M, all that. But it was after I got saved, I just felt the Lord say, go to Texas Tech. And it's like the one thing where you're like, what? Like, I'm, I don't want to go there. And I go to Texas Tech and, uh, you know, in my dorm room, I'm uh, I'm praying and I started praying. I've got filled with the Holy Spirit I, with that summer when Todd White was doing all his mm. stuff at Southwest. And uh, that was the first time in my dorm room I ever prayed in the Spirit. And I was like, praying in the spirit for a very long time and I just felt the Holy Spirit say go back to heritage and serve in the youth group and I was like what the the church I used to go to when I was like a baby you yeah. know what I mean like what and I just felt that like go to heritage <laughs> go to the youth group and just like okay so I just the first person like going to ministry and I was like or going into ministry mm-hmm. I was like wait, what, who do I, who do I call? And it's so crazy. I called Pastor Justin. I didn't call my grandpa. I didn't call my parents. I called Pastor Justin. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Pastor Justin, I just kind of had like an experience with God right now. Um, he told me to go into ministry and serve. And I want to help in you guys' as youth group. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm so glad you had that. You know how yeah. you know, your, your dad is You're just like, oh, Okay, he's so sweet about it. He's so nice. Sure, and he's yeah, like, yeah, come man. On. He's like, okay, great. I'll I'll talk to your grandpa, and you know, uh, I'll let you know what's up. And I was like, okay. And at the end of the phone call, this is so funny. I said just randomly because I was in my Holy Spirit like feels. <laughs> I was like, okay, love you. And he said he was like, okay, Dylan, see ya. And I was like, ah, oh, man, okay, that, that was awkward. You. But Thanks. yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Um, but I mean, I, he I does asked, love you. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. He's told me he loves me now, you know, but, uh, you know, I asked the Holy spirit. I was like, do you want me to stay at tech or like, it's the first week. Do you want me to drop out of college? Like right now and go there. And he said, and I said this in my offering message, he said, no, I want you to stay for the whole year because don't, I'm going to bring you broken people and you're going to bring them mm-hmm. to me. And I was like, okay, great. And that's, you know, the season when I was when Abby was gone that six months, my senior year was me learning that I need God Mm -hmm. and the six months to eight months that I was at Texas tech was learning about evangelism. Mm -hmm. Like to me, that's when I came out as like, I don't want to say like a minister, but like I'm in ministry. Like this is my ministry right now. That was your call. Yeah, That was the moment you got the call. Exactly. And I just like, my roommate wasn't saved. He went to high school with me. Like, you know, I was preaching the gospel to him and sowing seeds in him. And I was praying for people in the cafeteria. And just like, it was like, oh, all these cool kids are around. Like, I don't want to do this, but I'm just praying for people. And, you know, they're getting healed. And it's just like, God was doing something so crazy in me. But I was like, at the end of it, I was like, I want to go to Heritage already. I want to go to Heritage already. And it was, uh, it was something where COVID happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I moved in with my grandparents at, uh, in Weatherford. And then, uh, once COVID kind of started dying down, especially at our church, I mean, we, you know, we had a lot less restrictions in a lot mm-hmm. of other places. So I moved to Fort Worth and, uh, pastor Rick, we started the internship with mm-hmm. me, CJ and Ashley. And that's where it kind of started off as just, you know, with youth group is, you know, under pastor Rick's leadership and under pastor Justin's leadership. So that was, that was that was a crazy transition for me for you know going from not caring about God to learn loving God learning to love God learning to evangelize and like going through this whole crazy journey that I didn't think to coming back to where I belong honestly I mean how did you develop that confidence to to minister to people 
or to to do all those things at school that you did? How did you develop that confidence? Is it because you knew this is what I was called to do or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was something that I don't know. It's just, I think the whole, what it says in the word, you know, I'll give you boldness and I'll give you, uh, you know, Paul says, I'll give you that boldness to go out and preach to God. Like, don't be ashamed of the gospel, yeah. what it says in Romans. And to me, you know, I think I just like, loved people so much at that seat like there's so many like what miss carolyn says about our church there's so many hurting people outside these walls love them yeah. for me and i think that's just like i think the love of god just like outpoured uh, like just pouring out o over everyone in that moment everyone i came in contact with i just was like hey jesus loves you like i would never say that before yeah. i was scared no. to be like oh yeah. jesus that's but you know it's okay. just that confidence i think i mean i'm a I'm kind of a, I'm a big extrovert. I have a big personality. So I'm all, already a talkative person sometimes. Uh, but when you add Jesus with that, it's like, it just, I don't know, it just came out of me. It was, it was just kind of simple, you know, mm -hmm. just simple. Simple, pure. Yeah. Uh, pure hearted, you know, yeah. a lot of people are moved by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see that all the time in people who are coming up to you and being bold with their face. Right. Especially young people yeah. too. I mean, mm -hmm. CJ tells people in the drive-thru that he loves them. I'm like, you don't yes. know them. He's like, but yes. I still love them. Yeah. This, like this generation, I mean, y'all aren't that much younger than me, but like, mm -hmm. I feel like this generation is so much more bold and intentional mm -hmm. than I agree. the other, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's exactly. very, oh, yeah. it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's That's like, awesome. it's like they've had, they don't need the fake. They don't need, no. and exactly. they don't need it. They want something real. They yeah. want it real. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They've seen yes. it. They've seen the other stuff, yeah. or at least they yeah. have watched the results of like the lack of authenticity, yeah. like specifically yeah. within the kingdom, maybe. Right. We don't the have culture. that as, as much. I feel like it's, yeah. I love, yeah. I love the boldness of like so that generation. That just brings up another question to me, just at, from your vantage point, serving in youth, and, uh, you know, the culture of Christianity in general, especially in America, mm -hmm. do you see a transition or what do you see this younger generation bringing to the kingdom of God that's different than what we've had before? Um, personally, I am super passionate about what y'all were just saying, like authenticity and genuineness. And, and that brings out boldness in people because we, you know, like I know the truth and I want to bring it to you and I want to be genuine with you. And it requires boldness to do that. And with the youth group here, like me and Dylan and the youth team have like seen them grow so much oh, yeah. since I started, which was when Alex started about a year ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's just, it's been, it's just, it's like, there's a hunger there that I wasn't expecting to see because it, I feel like for me, when I was in youth, I didn't necessarily experience that as much in the same way, but it's almost like there's a boldness in their hunger. Like they're not afraid to want it. Like they're not afraid to show that they want it. So I think that they're, they're, they're bringing an eagerness into the next generation. They're bringing more boldness. And I think that comes with being authentic and also being intentional with one another and community and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I think the same thing too. I think one, I think, you know, for like the past, you know, 10, 20 years, it's all been about going through the motions or trying to get the biggest numbers yeah. or trying to, oh, do we look cool? Mm -hmm. And obviously, Dr. Schwell says when times change, change with it. You know what I mean? To, sure. to yeah. you know, reach people. Yeah. But to me, a successful youth group is not based off numbers. It's based off how you're reaching them and yeah. what they're receiving right now. And right now those kids oh my gosh they they're hungering for mm -hmm. god like we've had services like cj said and ash have been like we've never seen a service like that and like our whole you like ash has been in youth what since like 2014 15 yeah. she yeah. said yeah. i've never seen like that like even ashley ashley is a natural introvert like mm -hmm. and she's laying hands on people oh, yeah. and they're falling mm -hmm. out. it's like it's something is happening where god is putting something in them where then they will go out right. and then the numbers will come. Right. Like we don't worry about the numbers. We worry about the kids we have right now and setting them up so that they can go out into the world. What yeah. it says, the great commission is something that we're, we're building them up as disciples. Even if they're not going to be in full-time ministry, they're going to be ready to preach the word, 
you know, so into people, pray for people, wherever they are, wherever they right. are yeah. what, whatever yeah. they're doing. And I think to me right now, it's, it's something that's like, it's so good to see like, like, you know, Ralphie, like for example, like it's so good to see Ralphie just like coming to like, just like knowing who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Like I, when I first came here, Ralphie was a sixth grade little kid and now he's in change his diapers. That's how that's crazy. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) but seeing him now as like a ninth grader in high school and he's just like, like seeing Jesus in a way that he's never seen it before. It's so moving. And then bringing know? all of his friends exactly. to come to youth and yes. be a part of it. Cause he wants everyone Them to feel to that everyone that. to experience yeah. that. That's what it's literally exactly. all about. That yeah. is the point. Exactly. of That is the point of it. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, it's something that it's so different. And it, cause I mean, I didn't have a youth group growing up. Mm-hmm. So this is like, mm-hmm. I love this youth group, you know, mm-hmm. cause this is, this is my first youth group. I mean, I went to youth groups like my senior year with my friends, mm-hmm. but I mean, that was in my youth group. This is this is like my family, and it's something that just seeing them hunger and God uh, for God in a way that they never had before, and yeah. worshiping and getting on their knees and and crying and you know praying for each other. That's something that that's what it's about. That that's to me what it's about is that's that. for youth, mm-hmm. and it's just it's so good to see them wanting God and wanting Jesus. You know, you, you talked a little bit about being married and becoming one flesh. Mm-hmm. Is uh, youth ministry the call that you hear God talking to you both about? Is this something you guys share, something that's developed, or is, is there a call for further? Or what are you hearing God talk to you guys right now? Yeah, so we actually recently talked about this. Dylan, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like that, youth ministry is a huge call in his life and like he's extremely passionate and then for me it's not the same and so we are doing it together but um it's not like the call you know like the ultimate call in my life is not youth ministry um but it is um loving others and seeing and being a part of what god is doing so it definitely counts you know it is oh yeah part of you know what i'm passionate about but it's not the thing so i mean I think God is still kind of developing the areas of ministry that we're going to be one in. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are one in this, like in youth ministry. Um, But I think there's honestly so much more that God has for us. And I don't really know what that is yet. And it's kind of just all part of the adventure, you know, of marriage. Um, But right now it's, um, I have, you know, dreams and goals of starting a coffee shop. And Dylan is just like, you should start so, one here, by the way. You should, we that would be we so need fun. a coffee shop really bad. <laughs> Dylan is like the opposite of a coffee drinker slash coffee person. So <laughs> it's just funny how like there are opposite interests that we hold and are very passionate about. But God is definitely going to work with that, you know, together and mm-hmm. for sure. his good, you know. Well, passion for people crosses yes. every right demographic yes. crosses every type of job that you could have. Yes. And uh, as someone who is, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, bivocational, meaning that I'm in ministry, but I'm also in healthcare. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I work in two different places. There's no less of a call in ministry in my life when I'm at the hospital right. than when I'm at That's the great. church. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. it doesn't divide. Like mm-hmm. I'm called to a ministry of reconciliation mm-hmm. for nobody, no matter who I'm with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it didn't, it wasn't like overnight and it's not overnight. I mean, you guys are almost one year married yes. so it's like you shouldn't have all the answers yeah. yet mm-hmm. and i feel like sometimes good, people yeah. will put pressure like mm-hmm. oh you got to figure this out mm-hmm. like you're called in ministry it's like if you just let that just marinate with the lord and let him show you yeah then it it'll it'll all tie together mm-hmm. yeah and you might be doing something different in 10 years and that's okay yeah. we are our like, ministry yeah yeah exactly. our life is a ministry yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. i am not called to be on a stage preaching to people that right. i know of so far but my ministry is wherever i am whatever mm-hmm. i'm doing and whoever right. you're with. and whoever yeah. i'm with yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think it's that's what I, that's what is most beautiful to me in the kingdom of god like yeah. you don't have mm-hmm. to be put in a box like yeah. for a long time I think that we just had that impression that like if you're part of the fivefold ministry you're in ministry right, right. and if you're not then um, have fun. Yeah. You know what, what I mean? Yeah. Good luck. 
but ministry is life and that's yes. yeah. what y'all are, are mm-hmm. living i know yeah. dylan came and helped uh us coach our little twins as basketball yes game. Mm-hmm. really cute. fun it was really cute it was so cute. really hilarious it is all about hurting cats at like seven years <laughs> old on the basketball court it was insane yeah it was it was a good experience and i love every single one of those kids but it's crazy at some points because <laughs> you got parents Something about them godly parents, man. They're just like <laughs> screaming and yelling. You mean at godly you. the city, not godly as in like godly, godly. Oh like, yes, yeah. godly yeah, the godly, city. Godly, yes, the godly city. Texas. Not like yes. godly parents. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, sorry. Yeah, but <laughs> that could be confusing. Yes. Yeah. 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 But um, something about them, they just like going crazy during There's the game. There's some intensity. Yeah. But just the kids. I mean, you're like, I love these kids. Yes. And yeah. There was such a heart for people. I thought that was a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Very cute. And they. You know, with those kids, I mean, it's so, you know, the league or playing basketball is so big to them. Like, they think they're in the NBA, and I want I want them to have an experience where, oh, that was the best experience I've ever had. Yeah. You know, like coaching, like coaching them, I want to teach them in a way that they're going to, it's going to help them out in the future. And it's something is, that's been a thing my whole life is like, you know, wanting to help kids and spend time with kids and you know, help them develop and, um, like, you know, coaching Bryn's basketball team mm-hmm. when I like, I, me and my buddy, Ryan, uh, Morales, uh, we coached Bryn's basketball team for three years when they were in elementary school and we just went and saw them play in varsity, a varsity game and took a picture with them after the game. It's so crazy to see them. They're all grown yeah. up and, you Makes know, you feel way really better old. than me, you know, yeah. but yeah. It, it's just cool to see that happen. And, you know, even after our basketball season, some of the parents coming up to me and Ryan and you saying that was that was, you guys are great coaches. Like we care that you guys care about our kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I had a parent come up to me after and said, my kid really looks up to you and I really want you to develop a relationship with him. And to me, I was just like, I was trying not to cry. I was just like, <laughs> and that sweet. was that was really sweet. Yeah. And, but, uh, and authentic. I mean, obviously, yeah. you mar- you mark those kids yeah. for and whether they realized it or not for the kingdom. I mean, mm-hmm. you implanted some incorruptible seed without them even knowing. Yes, ma'am. And, yeah. and I think that's the beautiful thing. That, I yeah. mean, that's yeah. kind of what we're talking about, like ministry in all areas yeah. of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and when it comes to my my call, you know, for, you know, for three years, I've tried to figure that out. And I'll be real with you, you know, when you are, you know, Dr. Savelle's grandson, there is a certain pressure on you. I was... And literally just about yeah we're on the we're on the same page yeah. yes but yeah. there's a certain pressure to you and you know i love i love when you know people encourage me and but it's it's a certain thing when a guy comes up to you and says you're going to be the next jerry savelle that that's that's a pressure yeah. that it's that when i was you know in 2020 or when i was a little younger just like oh man i i can't i can't do that it's heavy. i can't yeah. be that like i remember <laughs> some lady it was my first time ever going on a trip with my grandpa uh when i started here and she said are you gonna take your grandpa's mantle up after he retires and i'm like uh i don't think i can and I, my grandpa's just like sitting there in the corner <laughs> just hands folded and she's just like and she's just like she's like well you have it in you just know that but just people saying yeah, that a lot. you know either at you know southwest believers convention or you know uh, HFMA, it's it's something that's a pressure. Then I'm like, well, God, what am I being called to? Like, what am I? And I felt like the Holy Spirit just kind of told me, "You're Dylan. You don't have to be your grandpa." Right. Mm-hmm. And and I'm I just asked him at that moment, "Well, okay, so what is my calling?" And I just felt him say, "To continue your grandpa's legacy even after he's gone, whether that's cleaning toilets, whether that's preaching on a stage." He said, continuing that legacy because it's something that when he's gone, it's just not going to stop. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I believe at one point that all of my siblings, all of my family will all be in ministry together. Whether that's, you know, them doing, I don't know, something that's not full-time ministry. Right. But I feel like at some point that it'll be us carrying it for him because this, this is our family. This is mm-hmm. my family's legacy. And something is, I don't need to worry about being Jerry Savelle. I just need to worry about continuing what he started. Mm-hmm. That that's that's what I feel like my calling is. Whether it's youth ministry, kids ministry, 
um, victorious adults. I mean, I don't know whether <laughs> when I get to that age, right. you know, exactly, you know, yeah. sports, a big thing with me is sports and, oh, you know, yeah. doing softball with your husband, right. Ryan, and, yeah. you know, coaching basketball. It's like, God is giving me so many passions that I feel like I can do all of those things, Yeah, you know, and whether I'm doing youth and 20 years or not, I always want to be involved in youth. I always want to be involved in kids. Oh, yeah. And it's something to me that, you know, continue what your grandpa started and not trying to be your grandpa. So that that's, that's a big thing for me is I don't know what I want to do now, mm -hmm. but that's what I know the basis of what I want to do is if that makes sense. No, that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. You know, uh, we've been around since like 28, 2008 or so, mm -hmm. but we've done a ton of different things in ministry and been, you know, assigned different things. And some points you're like, yeah, that's what we're called to do. And then, mm -hmm. and then, the, you know, two years later, like, mm, and yet, you know, seven, 10 years into the thing, we're doing something completely different than mm -hmm. we've yeah, ever done yeah. before. So I think it's, I think ministry is a call of life as opposed to like, yeah, oh, this good. is, this is one assignment. This is one assignment. Now I am doing YouTube. I don't even, yeah. you know, like if you would have told me two years ago, that's would have been the assignment on my life. I would have been like, I don't, I don't know anything about <laughs> I know, right? Well, I believe that yeah. it's all, I mean, it's all a learning experience. And how do I know? Like I've never, I've never designed a website before yeah, look and you. I got thrown mm -hmm. in like I got that task got put on my desk and I did it and who knows maybe in the future I'm going to be yeah I'm going to need that tool exactly. you know what I mean yeah. so I look at it that way is like right. every area that I've worked in or everything that I've done is another tool to add you know that I can yeah. take somewhere else or that I can use somewhere else who knows yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's good and it's good to just remember that because I, I think it was two or three years ago. The Lord told me like, I'm going to have you do things this year that you've never done before. Mm. And none of those things I'm doing now. <laughs> and so wow. it was just like you had said, like yeah. it was just kind of like adding to like the arsenal that God has. Built yes. in. And I see that in you guys. I mean, I see mm -hmm. this is, this may be what you're doing now, but just flowing with the Lord and mm -hmm. being intimate with him, he'll guide you. Is anything, I was curious about your time in YWAM in Africa. Like does mm -hmm. any of that yeah, stuff Africa, come back you up? You kind of just threw that in there. <laughs> yeah. We did not expand on yes. it. Yes. I know so, that must have been a cool experience. It was, um, it was winter of 2019. So January through June. And the first three months I was in Colorado Springs and we were doing what's called a DTS discipleship training school where you spend the first three months really getting, really connecting with people you're there with and learning about God. And each week there's like a different topic. So it's a lot in three months to learn. And then the next three months you're sent overseas to a country in the 1040 window that it has the, is the least reach group of right. people with the gospel. So I went to Morocco in Africa, North Africa and with a team of nine other people. And so basically it was really cool because looking back, I can totally see like what God was doing with that experience because the ministry I was doing in Africa with my team is actually the ministry that I'm most passionate about now, which is just forming relationships with people because we didn't have like a specific task where we were like going to go build a well or build a like hut or like, you know, it wasn't like labor. It was actually like we were in a tourist city and we were basically just put in an apartment and told to like make friends with the English speaking students that were there who were Arabic and learning English so we could communicate with them. And my dad actually told me that he called me one day and he was like, hey, I feel like God is saying that there's a girl there that you're going to reach. And I don't know why I'm telling you that, but I just feel like that maybe there's a girl there. So if you do connect with someone, just maybe this is confirmation that that's a really important relationship. And then there's this girl who like, I remember the last day I was there, I gave her like a friendship bracelet. Like I was actually like her friend. Like I made friends with people overseas. And that was like the ministry we were doing was like building relationships and through organic conversations, God comes up every time because you know, the first time I talked about God, um, it was during Ramadan and they were asking me like, do you fast? And I was like, I fast, but not for Ramadan. Like I don't, I fast for other reasons. And then they asked me about it. I expounded on it. And then before you know it, I'm sharing the gospel to someone. And then, you know, before we left the very last day, I, or the last night I shared the gospel with someone else. And I, 
like in the moment, I didn't even realize what was happening. But after the conversation, I was like, I literally just like talked about Jesus for 30 minutes with this guy. Like I barely knew because he just was so curious and he was actually, it came up because I was telling him about Dylan and I was like, I don't know how it came up, but somehow church came up or God came up and I was like, yeah, my boyfriend's a Christian and he lives in, you know, Texas. And he was like, oh my gosh, a Christian. Yeah. And you're, y'all are all Christians. That's so cool. Like, what do y'all really believe in? And I was like, let me tell you, cause I've been <laughs> asking God to like, you know, give me more opportunities. So it's funny cause that type of ministry is actually what I'm most passionate about now and kind of the main purpose behind my vision for the future, which is my coffee shop that I'm wanting to um, make with my best friend, Madeline. And that's, we have a very similar vision on that of like organic conversations and just like God using community to like community is just so, has so, such a weight to me, holds such weight to me and knowing that someone can come in and I can be like, hey, and call them by name and say like, how's your work going? How's your school going? Like you like being intentional with people. That's like my passion. So that whole mission trip, like kind of taught me a little bit, I guess about that. Cause it was very uncomfortable for me because I am naturally quiet and reserved and love one-on-one -on -one conversations, but it's harder to just go up to someone in a group and be like, Hey, what's up? So it grew me a lot. Um, but then coming af coming back after that, it was like, I learned so much about community that I really just never stopped wanting that since then. And then especially now and moving forward, like that is, if I had to say one thing, the main thing I'm passionate about is community and fellowship and being intentional with one another. So it like brought you, me to this point. Do you feel like you've, you have community at Heritage? I do. I, especially when it comes to youth group, I feel like a lot of, um, like, I just, I love the youth girls. I mean, I see them as my friends, honestly. I'm like, I call them my friends. I'm like, hey friends, like, I just love them. And I feel like in the youth team, especially too, has provided a lot of community. And yeah, we're very, very close knit group. Um, and I've seen God use that and use like my connections there to bring up conversations and sometimes really hard conversations with some of the youth girls and they'll have questions or they'll have something that they talk about that isn't normally talked about. And I'm like, yes, let's talk about this. Like I want to talk about hard things, you know, with people. So that's also another thing. And I'm also studying counseling. So it just goes hand in hand with like, I love just conversation that's intentional and that's hard. Like I'm like, bring it on. Like I want to talk about hard <laughs> things. Like I want to be honest. I want to talk about things that aren't talked about a lot. So I've definitely found that in youth group as well, serving here. And it's been so much fun and just so fulfilling. And I look forward to it every time. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's something to be said about building relationships with people you serve with. Yeah. I yes. Mean, I think uh, that's a unsung hero of serving in the, in the local church yeah. is the relationships you build with the people that yes. you connect with. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have been here um, for sure, Dylan, long enough to know, but also Abby, that mm -hmm. the, kind of the under the underwriting theme of our house is making winners in life. Yeah. That's what the church is about, right? Mm -hmm. um, what does that statement mean to you? Well, to me, you know, what my, what my grandpa says is having a no quit attitude. And like, if God is for you, who can be against you? You know, like when every, any situation that pops up with me and Abby is like, everything's going to be okay because we're made winners in life and God is, God is in us. So he's going to get us through this. So yeah. something to me is like knowing that God can never fail and knowing that I am made a winner and I'm going to win this battle with God, with my wife right next to me, like. Satan's lost already. Yeah. Like when I was a kid, my mom said I would be on the table slamming my foot saying, Satan, you're under my foot. And <laughs> as a four-year-old, I'm doing that. So it's been installed in me, like yeah. don't quit and don't have a, have a loser's mentality. You know, don't have a mentality where it's like, oh, well, you know, we have to give up because the situation is impossible. But to me, it's like knowing I'm a winner and knowing that God is for me. I think for me, I think of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, which is for I know the plans for God knows the plan or for I know the plans I have for you. It says the Lord plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And I think if if I know that God has good plans for me, then how can I 
you know, like how can doubt win? If I really truly believe that, how can doubt win? Like I will, I'm winning when I believe that. So as long as I'm believing that and speaking that and and living that out, knowing that, okay, God has good plans for me. I've seen it, I'm seeing it and I will see it. Then like I'm winning in life, mm-hmm. you know, you can't lose. That's good. Those are great answers. Yeah, those are good answers. Thank you. You passed. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's so much, it, it really is my favorite part of that. I've thought about that, like what I would respond and well, I'm not going to give it away. Yeah. But it, 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 it. There's just, yeah. there's so much, like, it is, it is very personal. It's very, and what I would say has never been what somebody Hasn't else been has said. said. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. the, all, all the answers that. are so varied. I'm ready for that. the answer. Y'all are so sweet. We love having you guys. Thank you, thank you, guys. you for having yeah. us. It was awesome. Thank y'all so much for joining us. And thank you listeners. This was a great conversation that we had today. And the show notes, we're going to link the youth Instagram page. So be sure to check that out and tune in next week for more winning conversations.